All right, so here we go, continuing on with our Ottoman Empire. Last lecture, we had talked about Murat I and the Battle of Kosovo, and I mentioned that he was killed at the Battle of Kosovo, living the Ottoman Empire to this man named Bayezid I. And things get pretty interesting under the reign of Bayezid. Uh, he's a little bit different as the other, other Ottoman empires in some respects. Some respects, he's still, you know, a fighter and conqueror. In other respects, he's got some characteristics that are... Uh, going to not give him a lot of favor, and this is all going to come together in this kind of brief lecture uh, as we continue the story of the rise of the Ottomans. So you have his dates, 1389 to 1412. Uh, that's when he was ruler. Uh, one interesting story right off I want you to know about Bayezid is he had a brother named Yaqub who he killed, or he didn't personally kill, but his followers had him caught. I believe they had him strangled to death. And the reason I mention this is this actually becomes a pretty big part of uh Ottoman history moving forward. Uh, this brother against brother or killing, one brother kills another brother, and it's really sometimes a survival of the fittest among these brothers in terms of who becomes the next Ottoman Sultan. So this is kind of a very dark precedent that I think uh, Bayezid uh, starts going, and it's gonna be a huge problem for, business, uh, for Ottoman history moving forward. So what exactly does Bayezid do? Well, he has a couple conquests. He is going to move into Greece a little bit, or the northern part of Greece, I should say. And he has great desires to get a really strong, <coughs> ooh, excuse me, a really strong foothold in Anatolia. Basically, he wants to consolidate all of Anatolia under his reign. And he's doing a fairly decent job of this. Apparently, he's very good at moving his army from point A to point B real quickly. And he's actually somewhat effective in doing this. He even has desires to go into Constantinople, um, which he attempts. He doesn't obviously conquer Constantinople. Uh, this really starts to make the Western world very nervous. The Pope at the time, Boniface IX, has went as far as to call for a crusade even against the Ottoman Empire, which I'm going to give you a little bit more details what happens with this in a second. Uh, so Bayezid, on one hand, yeah, he you know moves into northern Greece, takes over a little bit more land. He does a pretty good job in adding more regions into Anatolia, although that's going to also upset somebody, as you're going to see in a minute. But he also had all these behaviors that kind of rubbed some people the wrong way. He apparently kind of liked to dress more like the Western style sometimes. Uh, there are reports that he drank a lot, something that is frowned upon, of course, in the Islamic faith. Um, in the textbook that I have you guys read, they talk about how he even practiced uh, homosexual behavior. All of these are things that alienated a lot of people inside of his own empire. And as I said, there was kind of people from all over trying to get at him. And so there was attempts from the West. The Pope says, well, let's go on a crusade. Let's destroy the Ottoman Empire. Let's get this guy, ba uh, Bayezid I, and let's just, you know, get, stop the Ottoman Empire from getting too big and too strong. That didn't work well. Why did that not work well? Well, and to some degree, when you talk about the rise of the Ottoman Empire, yeah, they had some strong sultans, but they also got a little bit lucky. What do I mean by that? Well, if you think about the years, and when we're talking about the rise of the Ottomans in the mid-1300s, you can have a pope call for whatever he wants to call. Right in the middle of the 1300s, 1347 moving forward, you have the Black Death in Europe, right? The bubonic plague, we believe it's the bubonic plague. Some people say, yeah, it wasn't the bubonic plague, but this Black Death sweeps across Western Europe. If you're not familiar with this, it hits in 1347, wipes out maybe a third, even more of the population of Western Europe, devastates them. Literally at the same time as the Black Death is going on, France and England are fighting each other in what we call the Hundred Years' War. Uh, so that's something that we see going on here. So France uh, and England have this big war, the Hundred Years' War. So you got the Black Death, you got the Hundred Years' War, both going on in the mid-1300s. And so it was naturally very difficult for the Western power, for a pope sitting in Italy saying, hey, let's go conquer the Byzantine, uh, the Ottoman Empire and stop them. They kind of got their hands full. And so Bayezid, I don't think, really had that much to worry from the West. And I think that is one of the reasons that the Ottoman Empire is able to be successful. 
However, not everything was great for Bayezid, because while the West was not really able to do much to him, there was a figure in the East that was a bit more aggressive and a bit more able, and in fact is going to hammer Bayezid pretty good. And it's this guy named Tamerlane, or Tamer, or Tamer the Lame, or sometimes known as Timur, I've seen his name so many different ways, and he is from the East, uh, so he's coming in from further east, and he starts sweeping in to Ankara. Ankara, right, kind of in the center part of uh, the Ottoman Empire, of the Anatolia area. And so there, we're going to now see a conflict between Tamerlane and Bayezid the first. Now, this guy, Tamerlane, he had a very fierce reputation. Sometimes we call Tamer the Lame because it was said he was shot with an arrow and he walked with a, uh, with a limp. Um, he was very aggressive. There's one account in 1401 when he enters the city of Baghdad over here, Baghdad, and kills 20,000 people there in his conquest of the area. And then he's kind of sweeping up north to try to fight the, the Ottomans. And there's this battle there called the ba Battle of Ankara in 1402. Um, long story short, it's actually not a very long story. It's about a 14 hour battle. And in this 14 hour battle, uh, Timur wins. He in fact defeats Bayezid. Uh, and you know, even look at his picture here. You know, it's like, look like a happy guy here, right? Very aggressive uh, image of them. And he defeats Bayezid and Bayezid is captured and he dies in captivity. And so you actually enter this fascinating moment in early Ottoman history where the Ottomans were almost gone, not because of the West, but because of this guy at Tamerlane from the East, that he almost ended the Ottoman Empire. And actually from 1402 for about a 10 year, a little bit longer than that, uh, period, yeah, about 10 year period, there is no official Ottoman ruler. I'm, I'm going to talk about that and what happens um, in terms of, you know, who emerges after this. The Ottomans do survive mainly because, you know, Timur is more from the east. Instead of, you know, fully destroying the, the, the Ottoman Empire, he kind of focuses energies more back east. The Ottoman Empire survives. Um, and then after about 10 years, they get some new rulers again and they're able to build up some, men some momentum again, the Ottomans. And that's what I'm going to kind of cover in the next lecture. Uh, so Bayezid's kind of an interesting guy. He's got, again, he was able to accomplish a couple things, but alienated a lot of people and eventually was captured and dies in captivity uh, to, to Timur um, from the east. All right, so that's where we are. We're into this kind of moment of a, of a break of Ottoman rulers. And then we have this 10 year hiatus, which we're going to talk about in our next lecture and who emerges after that. All right, hope that's clear. Again, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.